The winter meeting of the Presbytery of West Virginia will be held on Saturday, February 17th on Zoom. I'm Susan Sharp Campbell, Associate for Educational Ministry for the Presbytery, and in this video I'll be walking through the packet and lifting up the work that we'll be about on the 17th. This video is not intended to do all of your work for you as you prepare for the meeting, though. So please read the entire packet in advance of the 17th. And remember that as we gather in councils of the church, such as this Presbytery meeting, we trust that God's Spirit will move among us to help us discern where God is leading us in our discussions and decision-making. So I encourage you to read the packet in advance, but not to make up your mind how you plan to vote as you read. Come with your mind open to hearing the voices of one another as, we, as recommendations are presented and discussed and the Spirit moves among us. I'm thinking that most of you who are watching this video have already registered for the meeting, but if you haven't done so let, yet, please do so no later than noon on Wednesday, February 14th. You may call the Presbytery office at 304-744-7634 or send an email to office at wvpresbytery.org or go online at wvpresbytery.org. But please register if you're planning to attend as only the folks that are registered will receive the Zoom link for the meeting. On the 17th, the meeting will begin at 9.30, though you can log on anytime after 9 a.m. You may join with your computer, tablet, or phone. Once you join, please be sure that your name is on your screen so that those taking attendance can note your presence. And if you're meeting with more than one person on the same screen, please be sure everybody's name is there so that attendance can be taken. If you're using a phone and unable to put your name up, please listen, as you may hear someone saying, who's on phone or number such and such. It's important that we see your names as we seek to register so we know there's a quorum for the meeting present. You will be muted as you join. And if you wish to speak, you must unmute yourself. The host can mute, mute you, but not unmute you. Once the meeting starts, please be sure that you are muted so as to mute any background distractions in people and other noises. At this time, if you haven't already done so, I would encourage you to download the packet that was sent in an email on Wednesday, February 7th, or can be found at wvpresbytery.org. This will enable you to walk it through me, through it walk through it with me and also reference it on the 17th. It is rather long, so please don't feel like you need to print all of it, though you may find it helpful to print the docket pages and the worship bulletin and flyers of interest at the end of the packet. As you review the materials in the packet, you'll note that it's divided into three sections, the docket with the agenda and committee reports, the worship bulletin, and flyers of upcoming events and opportunities in the Presbytery. The docket found on pages 1 and 2 sets forth the order in which business will be considered. The only exceptions to this will be when we come to items with an asterisk, which means they will be taken up at the time indicated, even if that means we skip over something or set something aside and come back to it later. The meeting will be called to order at 9.30 by Don Adamy, pastor of Bream Memorial Presbyterian Church and moderator of the Presbytery. Following prayer, the stated clerk, Maureen Wright, will announce whether a quorum is present. A quorum is 15% of the ministers of word and sacrament, or 16, and 15% of our churches represented by a ruling elder, or 18. Ruling elders who are attending a presbytery meeting for the first time as a commissioner from their church will then be introduced. We will then approve the docket that's been shared, though on occasion there may be some additions by the time of the meeting. Approval of the consent agenda will then be recommended. You'll find a description of the consent agenda on the first page of the docket. These are items that will be taken up in one motion without discussion unless someone asks that a particular item or items be removed so they can be discussed later in the meeting. Items on the consent agenda for this meeting are the approved excused absences from ministers and accessions, approval of a minister in another presbytery to preside at communion at a retreat this spring, 
approval of a ruling elder who participated in the communion preparation training course last fall to preside at communion in their church of membership, and that the offering received at this meeting be given to the Appalachian Service Project. If you find that you wish to ask that something be removed from the consent agenda, you would simply ask it be removed. The opportunity to share your reasons why or hear more about it will come later in the meeting. Next, the moderator will appoint temporary clerks. These are folks who've been asked in advance to serve to assist those who may be having difficulties with Zoom. This will be followed by the moderator appointing members of the leadership team who are present as the Committee on Bills and Overtures, which will review any new business that is proposed at this meeting. Please be aware that if you wish to submit an item of new business, it must be emailed to the stated clerk prior to the start of the Transitional General Presbyter's report. At each Presbytery meeting, there's time in the morning for an educational focus. For this meeting, Anna Lee Posey, Assistant Director of Home Repair, and Jane Chima, Director of Spiritual Programs from Appalachian Service Project, will share with us an overview of their work. This will be followed by a brief time of announcements before we move to worship. You'll find the worship bulletin following page 53. Again, so that you can easily follow as we worship, you may want to print, print the worship pages or have a second screen available. You'll note there's a time in the service called Celebrating the Saints. During this time, the names of ruling elders in our churches and minister members of Presbytery who died in 2023 will be lifted up. The list of these saints can be found on pages 51 and 52. Please note that the Presbytery is dependent on the names of ruling elders being submitted by our churches. If you're aware of ruling elders in your congregation who passed away in 2023 who aren't listed, please ask the clerk of session to contact Maureen Wright, the stated clerk. You'll see that we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper as part of worship as well. So as you sit down for the meeting, plan to bring with you some sort of bread and beverage so that you can join in the meal we share together. At the end of the bulletin, you'll find some notes on the service, including where you can send your offering and who's leading us in worship. After worship, we will return to the business of the Presbytery. You'll find the report of the stated clerk on page four. There you'll find the list of communications that she's received and referred the names of those who have completed their term on the Permanent Judicial Commission of the Presbytery, as required by the Book of Order, and the list of churches who have submitted their session records for review since the November meeting. At the end of that page, you will note that the deadline has passed for clerks of session to, to submit their church's statistical report, but if this has not been done, please contact Maureen prior to the end of February as she can add your report. On page five, you'll find some helpful information on procedural matters for our electronic meetings, particularly as they differ from our in-person meetings. However, as conducting meetings electronically has already been added to the Presbytery Manual, we will not be voting on what's on this page at this meeting. Some of the items that I would highlight from page five are, to participate in this meeting, persons must be pre-registered no later than Wednesday, February 14th. A quorum will be determined using the participants list on Zoom, which is why it's important for you to have your name on your screen. To be recognized by the moderator in, a, in order to speak, you need to use the chat feature or electronic hand feature. Throughout the meeting, we'll do our best, but ultimately sometimes things go wrong with connectivity. Please note, if you get disconnected and try to reconnect during the meeting, every effort will be made to readmit you. On page six, you'll find the procedural matters we will also follow. These include principles of parliamentary law, courtesy to all, one item at a time, majority rule, respect the rights of the minority, justice for all, and partiality for none ways to work and play well with others as we meet together. As items are discussed, pro and con speakers will alternate, with individuals being asked to identify the position they support. 
When one person has spoken on a pending question, all others wishing to speak must be heard before that person can speak again. It takes special permission for someone to speak on the same question more than twice. Here you'll also provide provisions from our Presbytery's manual that guide us, including who has the ability to speak and who has the ability to speak and vote. Please note that in the final section of the procedural rules, number one differs for this meeting. As noted above, those wishing to speak will do so by using the chat feature or the electronic hand feature. Once you're called on by the moderator, share your name, church, or relationship to the Presbytery. Address your, com your question to the moderator, and then you'll be muted by the Zoom host when you finish. As part of the procedural rules, you'll find that the limitation for debating any motion is 30 minutes per main motion, with each speaker limited to three minutes per speech, although this must be approved by two-thirds of those voting on the 17th. If there's an item you wish to speak to, I encourage you to write down your remarks in advance so as to keep you focused and within the time frame. Finally, on page 7, you'll find information on motion basics as we follow Robert's Rules of Order's par parliamentary procedure. After reporting as the stated clerk, Maureen Wright will then report orally in her role as the Transitional General Presbyter. We will then move to the reports of the leadership team and committees. In these reports, you'll find recommendations that we'll be voting on at this meeting, followed by information on the ongoing work of the committee. Because these recommendations come from a committee, they do not require a second. The leadership team report can be found on pages 8 through 10. There are a number of recommendations they'll be bringing to this meeting. The first three have to do with the committee chair and members of the Committee on Representation. Since the Committee on Representation serves as the committee that nominates persons to serve on presbytery committees and in other places, leadership team nominates those to serve here. As with all nominations, there is also the possibility of nominations from those voting members present. Please note, though, that if you wish to nominate someone, they must have already agreed to serve if elected. Their fourth recommendation is the first reading of a change to the Presbytery's manual, which revises the geographic description of the Presbytery's boundaries. A second reading is required at a later Presbytery meeting, so this will not be voted on at this meeting. The Public Domain Hymn Project seeks to provide a company for hymns in the Glory to God hymnal that are in public domain. The leadership team is recommending that a portion of a grant from the Synod be used to purchase some of these for our smallest churches. The National Church Residence Program provides a grant to the Presbytery for older adult ministry. The leadership team is recommending that these monies be used to contract pastoral services for a number of housing complexes in West Virginia. Next, the recommendation will come to use some of the funds that were budgeted for a Bluestone program director to su supplement compensation for Bluestone summer staff in 2024. The final three recommendations concern amending the Book of Order to include shared ministry and the definition of pastoral relationships in terms of call and installations. The chair of the leadership team will provide more information on these during his report. You will find these proposed amendments with their rationale on pages 11 through 15. You'll note in the information section of their report that the leadership team has been busy. They continue to work with Emily Swanson of Holy Cow Consultants in where God is leading the Presbytery in the future and on, are working on plans for future Presbytery meetings. They reviewed the work of the group working on policies mandated by the General Assembly and heard a report from the Bluestone Working Group as they explore the future for Bluestone. You'll also note here that they reallocated some of the funds that had been budgeted for the Bluestone Program Director for a 2024 Summer Program Director position, which will be filled by Mark Miller, Bluestone Facilities Manager. The Bluestone Committee will report next. You will find their report on pages 16 to 18. They'll be recommending the approval of the Bluestone budget, which can be found on page 18. 
The report provides information on the 2023 financial summary, 2024 projects, summer camp in 2023 and 2024, and upcoming retreats. Please be aware that they are seeking a number of summer staff and volunteers for camp this summer. You'll find several flower, flyers about Bluestone events and opportunities in the flyer section of the packet. Following the Bluestone Committee report, we will take a 30-minute break. Please note that while there are times given in the docket for, for specific times, this one is not marked with an asterisk, so the time for this break isn't set, only that it will be 30 minutes. After the break, the Committee on Representation will be recommending a Minister of Word and Sacrament to serve as a Commissioner to the Senate of the Trinity. You'll find this on page 19. Again, there'll be an opportunity to nominate others for this position, but they must have agreed to serve if elected in advance of being nominated. The Administrative Commission to Dissolve the Congregation of St. Mary's Presbyterian Church will report next. They will be making recommendations to conclude their work as the congregation is dissolved at its request and its legacy assets distributed as noted, as well as an item regarding property claims in the future. You will find their recommendations as well as the rationale and background for them on pages 20 to 22. On page 23, you will find a brief history of the church as its life comes to a close. The Nurture Committee report can be found on page 24. Their recommendation regarding communion at the Spring Youth Retreat will most likely have passed on the consent agenda. Much of their report contains information on upcoming events the Nurture Committee is providing, including expanding your ministry toolbox courses, two of which will be highlighted in videos by the leaders of this, these courses at the meeting, Festival of Faith, and youth events, the spring youth retreat, and the summer work camp. If you're interested in the Educator Clergy Commission Pastor Authorized Lay Preacher Retreat that is listed, please contact me prior to Tuesday, February 13th. You will also note here information about grants and loans available to post-secondary students, and information about serving on the Presbyterian Youth Council, You'll find flyers on each of these events at the end of the packet. As I mentioned in a recent Presbytery newsletter article, we rely on churches to share this information, church leaders specifically, and to share what comes by email, asking that you share with those in your congregation who might be interested in attending these events. So please help by forwarding and sharing them. Following the Nurture Committee report will be a time for good news from the pews. Unlike when we're in person and this is limited to ruling elder commissioners, everyone will have an opportunity to share something about what's happening in their congregations as we meet by Zoom. We'll do this in breakout rooms, which will be assigned by the host. At the appropriate time, simply click on the invitation to join a particular room, and don't worry. You'll be brought back to the main meeting when this time is over. The report of the Stewardship Committee consists of the financial status of the Presbytery as of December 31st, 2023. This information can be found beginning on page 25. Chris Alfred, our Financial Administrator Treasurer, will be reviewing this information with us. On page 25, you'll find the report on committee spending on Composite Spending by Committees in 2023. Pages 26 to 28 provide information on the budget versus actual spending in 2023 in full detail. On pages 29 and 31, you'll find the benevolence and per capita giving by congregations for 2023. And on the following pages, benevolence pledging and per capita amounts for 2024. Page 35 provides a list of the top 20 churches in terms of the total amount of their benevolences and in the giving per member. Page 36 contains year-end financial information on Bluestone Camp and Retreat. The report of the Vocations Committee can be found on pages 36 and 37. Their recommendation regarding a ruling elder presiding at communion will likely have been passed on the consent agenda. 
Their second recommendation is to amend the policy on authorized lay preachers, commonly referred to as ALPs. We do like our acronyms. Serving churches to include that they may preside at communion in churches where they preach at the invitation of the session. You will find this on page 37 with the proposed change in red. While authorized lay preachers are currently commissioned and authorized to preside at communion, this revision seeks to make that clear. As it is described as a policy, any revisions require presbytery approval. In the information section of the Vocations Committee report, you'll find that the committee will be developing training for ruling elders to serve as commissioned moderators of sessions without pastors. They also continue to provide support for our inquirers in the process of becoming ministers of word and sacrament and for ruling elders who seek to become authorized lay preachers and commissioned pastors. You'll also find their information on the next preparation training for ruling elders who wish to be authorized to preside at communion in their congregation of membership. In addition, committee members will be taking part in online training on the preparation for ministry process provided by our denomination. The Committee on Ministry does not have any recommendations at this meeting, but there is a great deal of information in their report on pages 40 to 47. You'll find there the renewal of covenants between churches and commission pastors, st stated supply pastors and lay supply pastors, as well as the approval of pastoral compensation for several installed pastors. You will note that they've had exit interviews with several sessions and pastors and continue working with churches in pastoral transition. They've also approved the pastoral match in terms of call for several of our churches and ministers. And finally, they have approved the retirement of John Kerner and Charlotte Kerner, minister members who have been serving in Clarksburg. We will be recognizing them and their ministry in a service of retirement at this point in the meeting. Several committees have not requested time to report at this meeting, but have provided written reports. The Administration Committee's report, found on page 48, highlights their work with current Presbytery staff positions. The Mission Committee's report is on page 49. Their recommendation regarding the offering will most likely have been approved on the consent agenda. And you'll note that they continue to work with mission and hunger grants. The Relation Committee, Relations Committee seeks to connect and contact churches and new pastors across the Presbytery and will be doing so in a variety of ways in 2024. They continue to have grants available to help with collaborative efforts between churches in our Presbytery. You'll find their report on page 50. On page 53, you'll find an evaluation form. Please don't ignore it. The leadership team reviews these and takes your comments seriously. The Nurture Committee uses these as a way to identify those willing to help with leadership for worship at Presbytery meetings. They are not ignored. This form will also be sent to participants electronically following the meeting, along with the flyers in the packet. It doesn't matter how you complete and return it, but please do so. After the evaluation form is the worship bulletin. After the bulletin, there's a section titled Flyers. As I've mentioned earlier, these contain information on upcoming events and opportunities and are meant to be shared with your session and people within your congregation whom you think might be interested. Flyers in this packet include the Educator Clergy CP ALP retreat for those who might want to register before February 13th. A toolbox course on preaching Pentecost and the long road after with Rich Volts in Charleston and on Zoom on March 4th. Festival of Faith with Shannon Craig O'Snell, who grew up in the Taze Valley Presbyterian Church on April 6th in Charleston. The Spring Youth Retreat at Jackson's Mill, April 12th through 14. The Guys Weekend at Bluestone, April 26th to 28. Preparation Training for Communion for Ruling Elders, April 28th on Zoom. Post-secondary grants and loans from the Presbytery with a application deadline of April 30th. Youth Council applications, which are due May 1st. 
The spring getaway retreat at Bluestone, May 3 to 5. The toolbox course being vital today with Brian Coulter on Zoom on May 4. Dates for Bluestone Summer Camp. Staff and volunteers needed for Bluestone Summer Camp. Please remember we do rely upon you all to share these. And with so many opportunities, we hope that those in your congregation can find a place to participate. If there's no new business given to the stated clerk before the start of the Transitional General Presbyter's Report, we will then move to adjourn, and the moderator will send us out with a benediction. The good news is most of us don't have to travel far to get home from this meeting. But please don't think you're done with the final amen. Your work continues as you share the work we will have done with your session, share the flyers with those who might be interested, and continue to pray for the work of the Presbytery. I look forward to seeing you on Zoom on Saturday, February 17th, when the Presbytery meets to discern where God is calling us in this time and place. In the meantime, if you have any questions or I can be of any help, please don't hesitate to contact me, Susan underscore Sharp underscore Campbell at Hotmail.com. See you on the 17th.